In today's episode of EU4, I'll show you how I created this Dutch Empire, trade and colonial style, without colonial ideas. Okay, I'll use expansion ideas, but only to make Africa look nice in the thumbnail. Really, that's the only reason. Welcome imperialists, Lucas here. Yes, I could have created such an empire with conventional colonial nations. Boring. However, I chose a much smaller duchy to start with. On the old continent, I'll only focus on conquering the Low Countries. Sorry, Belgium and Luxembourg. Still, I aim to become the greatest power in the world. The Dutch fleet will help us with that and its special ships. But let's get to the point. My tiny duchy of Flanders has a big problem because it's one of the states under the rule of the duchy of Burgundy. So I must fight for our freedom. And the best way to do it is by seeking support from Burgundy's rivals. But... I'm quite unlucky, because Burgundy only has Austria as a powerful rival. What happened to France and England, and even Austria isn't backing me? Alright, let's focus on privileges for social classes then. I'm distributing points, cheaper advisors, I might even afford them someday, but not at the moment. Additionally, I'm appointing diplomatic envoys, which prompts Austria to support me in my quest for independence. Lastly, supremacy from the nobility along with loans from the burghers. Should I keep talking about these privileges in every episode, or should I skip them? I'm getting rid of cavalry from the the army because they're too expensive. I'm hiring a diplomat with diplomatic reputation because I'll try to persuade France after all. So let's improve relations, but it seems impossible with England. Ah, a cheaper advisor. Meanwhile, I've also been selling our ships. Only transport ones because we'll need trading ones later. I'm not sure why Britain would buy them from us, but since they are, why argue? I quickly managed to gain support from France, which suddenly started hating Burgundy. Hooray! That's why I'm recruiting troops now, led by General Alexander though I'm not sure what he'll shoot at. Never mind, let's just declare our independence. We should win this, rather. Philip II, Heinsberg will lead our nation to freedom. Fortunately, France and Austria decided to support me in this war. Honestly, it couldn't have been otherwise. Since my troops won't achieve much on their own here, I'm withdrawing immediately to French territories. Looks like our army's done for. Sacrifices were made. But at least I have a significant role in the war. Let's focus on defending our forts. There's not much else I can do. Let diplomats tighten relations with my allies. Fortunately, France directed its troops to our territory. Oh, even the Emperor's troops are here. Luck is on my side again. England decided to peacefully hand over Maine to France. And in the process, the Emperor and the French liberated my territories very well. However, during this war, I'm still rebuilding my army. We'll need it right after this war. Our army will even help in capturing forts. Oh look, rebellions. A great victory. Freedom won in less than five years. However, it wasn't just a fight for Flanders' freedom, but also for Brabant and Holland. It's a pity that Austria doesn't seem to like it very much. That's why my diplomacy will now work to fix this situation as quickly as possible. Well, alliance with Austria is gone. <coughs> someday it'll return because they have a very favorable attitude towards me. Oh my god, I'm not, a, I'm not in the empire. How did that happen? But fortunately, I can quickly join it. I was really sure I was in the empire. And now the emperor no longer protects the Liège. I managed to restore an alliance with Austria right away. It's a pity they're currently at war and it seems like they might be losing. <coughs> And of course, another stroke of bad luck. Holland allied with Denmark to prevent me from conquering them. But luckily, I'll likely afford it. Because I just sold the Renaissance to France. Boosting my military technology to level 5. Making me one of the first nations globally to achieve this. Meanwhile, my closest rivals are stuck at level 3. It's time to seize Anvers from Liege. Perhaps France will lend a hand. After all, why exert ourselves unnecessarily? However, even without France's presence in this battle, my formidable army manages just just fine. I didn't anticipate such aggressive expansion, but alas, two provinces are now under my control. Antwerpen, in particular, holds significance due to its glass production because I'll try to implement face sitting. Subsequently, I attacked Utrecht to showcase my military prowess, earning a hundred points of various kinds as a pleasant bonus. This enables me to advance to the fifth level of administrative technology and select my first set of ideas. And surprise, surprise, they're espionage ideas. Now begins the shadow play towards unifying the entire Low Countries region. Once these wars conclude, we can start expanding our fleet. I must admit, I've been foolish in my approach, neglecting to grant privileges for cheaper construction of trading vessels earlier. Let's welcome Byzantine refugees. Ah, the prestige boost is delightful. Unfortunately, I've become such a formidable power in the vicinity that my sole rival might be England or at least one of the three. I've also formed an alliance with the Danes in hopes of undermining their ties with Holland. It's time for our first technological advancement of our age of discovery. And here's the kicker, we won't venture into
into colonies because I have no intention of establishing them. Instead, we'll focus on a less aggressive expansion. I'm investing our initial funds in expanding trade buildings in the area, primarily in just two provinces for now, as I haven't yet conquered more. Plus, we're constructing grand ports by introducing face seating in Antwerpen. I guess they roll like that. We're earning incredible bonuses for trade and province development throughout the game. For the most part, I've been developing our provinces using military points as I have an abundance of them. And our technological advancements are well ahead. Consequently, we've expanded our Flemish cities. Let's embrace the philosophy of the Renaissance. Even cheaper technology, though it might irk the Pope a bit. Speaking of irritating the Pope, I'll steer clear of that by attacking Burgundy, inviting France and Austria for a swift war. In this Burgundian war, my aim isn't just to acquire these two provinces, but also to reclaim others by Liège and to liberate Luxembourg, ensuring that as few provinces as possible in the Low Countries region fall under the Emperor's or France's control. By the Burgundian event, which was getting close, it's a tough decision. Churches or production? Why not both? I can afford my two-tiered advisors now. They're 50% cheaper, but let's not dwell on that. What matters is that I'm turning a profit, and let's employ our merchants to swiftly improve relations in the region where we're at war. This will significantly reduce aggressive expansion. Honestly, I almost forgot about this. No, we don't want to challenge the Spanish fleet yet, at least not right now. And finally, I've developed the land reclamation. This is precisely why I chose Flanders as the base for building the Netherlands. I'll have plenty of time to develop its provinces, which seems quite affordable in this region. Our spies have succeeded in breaking the alliance between Denmark and Holland, allowing us to claim more territories for the Netherlands. But seriously, rebellions? I've also become adept at the art of blackmail. We must capitalize on this skill. Our next set of ideas revolves around offensive strategies. Combining these concepts will grant us significant bonuses in fort conquests. Yes, indeed, Europe is practically a siege simulator. Already, instead of 30 days, we're down to 24. Thanks to our spies, only our closest neighbors feel uneasy about our acquisition of such rich territories for Flanders. And with competent diplomacy, they'll swiftly forget our conquests. With the spoils from the war with Holland, we've sponsored a new maritime doctrine, the Dutch trade fleet. Meanwhile, I aided France in the Franco-Papal War, though it seems unnecessary. One could say that that Holland is a land of churches, as well as places of work, meaning work and prayer. Strangely, France was exceedingly grateful for my assistance against the Pope. This significantly boosted France's trust in us nearly to its maximum. After another five years, our spies managed to sow suspicions that these territories rightfully belong to Flanders. It's a shame that the Archbishopric of Utrecht had already allied with England. Perhaps the Danish fleet can assist us, and believe it or not, our combined fleet managed to defeat the English fleet. How did that happen? Our fleet even seized a few ships. Oh wait, the Danes helped, my mistake. But regardless, I gained ships. I didn't anticipate such generous English ideas. And truth be told, I could conquer the entire bishopric. People will forget about it in a year. And poof, a year has passed, just 14 days later. But wait, did I really need those two provinces? I could have just filed claims and spared myself the effort. But sometimes, I'm a bit of an idiot. However, with espionage ideas, such concerns become trivial. You could say England sponsored the expansion of our fleet in this war. I'm building shipyards everywhere. Global domination is the goal, and I hope to gain enough prestige to make people forget about my conquests. There are still a few provinces left to conquer in this region, and soon we might face our first wars with Castile. Honestly, to provoke them, I might need to go to war with England. And there we go. Seriously, does Holland not have any cool ship names? Heavy Ship 1. I'm also starting a massive project to fertilize our Dutch lands. It's not like I have nowhere to spend money. I'm also stealing maps, whether from Portugal or Spain, to learn about their exploits especially in Africa. Hello, hello, hello. And now the Burgundian crisis has arrived, albeit quite late in 1500. Burgundy was denied entry into the empire, granting it a 40-year casus belli against each of the electors to establish personal unions. Oops, a small coalition? Oops. All right, this coalition won't last long. Protestant Reformation and Protestantism in general are much better, but this time I'll go with Calvinism. So religion doesn't really matter to me at all. Now that colonialism has emerged, I'm introducing it myself through province development in Holland. This time I didn't forget the edict, I even upgraded the port to level 3 to usher in colonialism. Lately, many people have been asking me how to expand these ports. Basically, it's quite easy. For level 2, we need 10 province development points and 200 gold as a base. For level 3, it's 25 province development points and 1000 gold as a 
browser base. It's probably available in some DLC. If anyone knows, they can write a comment for those who can't find it on Google. Oh, a war with France for inheriting Burgundy. Wait, has this happened again? Here, these are two events. Nobody wants to work. How did it come to this? And France paid off my debt. How nice. It's time to expand our naval fleet with heavy ships. Yes, this time I made the right moves, and we even became one of the world's greatest powers. France is once again buying institutions from us. So you could say we're earning a lot, especially because we have significant shares in trade in the English Channel. We're also buying the loyalty of Luxembourg, where, in exchange for our ducats, they sold part of their sovereignty and became our vassal. Similarly, Eastern Frisia followed suit and sold us their freedom. Now, we're engaging in quite a few wars simultaneously, all in the aim of uniting the remaining provinces that rightfully belong to us. Since the age of exploration is drawing to a close, it's time to burn some taxes. Here we go. I know what I'll spend them on. Another era. I have a feeling it'll be a golden age for our nation. We even confirmed that. So leveraging all development modifiers, I've decided to expand my country to the fullest before the new era. I've conquered the entire Dutch region, finally. A bit late, but honestly, I didn't need to rush here. Since I heavily rely on Flanders infrastructure and its development, which unfortunately increases the governing cost of my provinces, I've changed our governance reform to centralization of bureaucracy. I intend to use centralization three, four, times in each of my non-capital provinces. For such a small country, look at how much governing I've used up. Who designed this mission? Do I really have to build a trade post in each of these provinces? And the reformation movement has emerged, which I am actually inclined to join. Despite everything, remember that I believe Protestantism would be better. But since I rarely play as a reformer, this time I'll give in. Wait, wait, could I have created a special Dutch government all along? Or is it only appearing now? I even have a parliament and the first very tough choice, who will rule our country. What should our faith focus on right now? Well, maybe nothing. Let my favor grow. Do I get something for that? Oh, I do. Great Britain has emerged. That's actually quite bad. Wait, wait. One of my missions needs this area for me. Oops, without creating the Netherlands, my missions expanded, also very intriguing. But at this point, I'm already forming the Netherlands. Besides the nice color, which will look good on the thumbnail, I've decided to adopt Dutch national ideas, because they'll be much better for waging wars and generally dominating the area. But in terms of my missions, only the far right path has been unlocked. Everything else was available when I adopted the religion. And now we can build special trade ships, which have increased firepower and can transport units. Additionally, our fleet limit has significantly increased. Yes, more special ships, and I'm converting transport ships into scraps. It's time to choose the third idea, which means a difficult decision. I could choose expansionist ideas to improve the miniature, as I'll get two colonists, which will help make nice borders in Africa. I can choose the infrastructure idea, which would be very useful, especially if we want to further develop the Netherlands. Innovative ideas. And here focus on accelerating the fort siege process. A really tough choice, but I'm mainly considering administrative ideas to cheaply add new provinces, but I'll go for expansive ideas. Now, I've taken a good look. I have a whole new right tree here. I can even get a union over Great Britain. I think I'll use that. The fluid ship. It's such a unique Dutch trading ship, and I need to expand my shipbuilding industry. It's a shame I started building a lot of ships earlier and won't benefit from it. I've chosen assimilation for my colonial policy. I'll mainly colonize the coasts of Africa, where there are plenty of people. I'll also support my traders, increasing not only my trade, but also colonial reach. And I'm sending my only explorer, Zachariah, to discover the new world. Now that I've appeared in Africa, I can directly attack Spanish colonies. With the help of France, Denmark, Austria won't help. Yes, it's definitely wartime. I start the war with a landing on England, destroying their army again. Then I move on to London, and after its fall, I'll besiege the whole country. It really surprises me how easily my Dutch fleet destroys the English. In the meantime, I've upgraded all provinces in England to level 20 development. There's nothing lower. From Portugal in this war, I'll take one island in the Caribbean. The biggest problem for my country will definitely be the lack of human resources. Because of this, I've decided to demolish churches everywhere and replace them with barracks. And there are steel manufactories ahead of me. France was very helpful in this war. From Castile, I'm taking their holdings in Africa as well as a lot of money and a foothold in Brazil. My next target in Africa will most likely be Mali, but I'll see. By the way, don't be tempted to make Mali a vassal. That country is a total 
mess because it totally fails to reform, leading to endless rebellions. With level 11 technology, I finally have something to spend money on and I'm building manufactories everywhere. I even saved some money. Even without them, my Netherlands are currently the richest country in the world. But the fact that 13 ducats is foreign investment, it's not worth paying attention to. And the best part is, this small piece of the world is now able to field an army comparable to France or other powers. The center of Calvinism in the middle of France. How did that happen? Because France is still Catholic. I'm starting another war with Portugal. But first, I'll attack England again, and for the first time use automatic province sieges for mercenaries in the new world. I'm curious to see how it works out. What a slaughter my fleet is causing. Wow, even the combined forces of Spain, England and Portugal stand no chance. But this is just the transport fleet. It's going to be a slaughter of innocents that I won't show you as usual. Why? Only five ships. I can't believe how easily I'm dealing with the Castilian army in this era. Their armies are really... What happened here? Oh, because that was changed recently. Well then, okay, everything's clear now why Spain is taking such a beating. I even totally destroyed the Spanish army. In a war when I attack Spain myself, it's just as easy as with the help of France. And a lot more money stays in my pocket. And this time, I really took a big piece of the Caribbean from Portugal, as well as in Mexico, here. So, now I'm only coring five provinces from each colonial area to finally establish colonies here. Because then I might have something to spend money on, as currently I basically have no more expenses. Interesting, there are increasingly more Castilian colonies to conquer, and we've modernized our army. Now equipped with fancy hats, the Dutch East Indies are emerging. They'll be surprised when they realize these aren't the East Indies. It's not worth establishing an independent colony here. I'll establish a crown colony right away. This will increase my army limit, although I might consider establishing a colony for the fleet. In the meantime, the Netherlands' income has greatly increased. War reparations are no longer as lucrative. In theory, I still have three to four years of peace with the major colonial powers. Hence, let's move my army to the colonies and Africa to utilize these three years for further wars there. The worst part is manually setting the route for conquest. Because frankly, if we sail into the open ocean once, we'll lose about half of that army somewhere. Anyway, 5,000 soldiers perished along the way. Let's divide these armies into smaller ones. It's gonna be a tough war because I'm not familiar with any of these nations. Although miraculously, my soldiers seem to know the way to the target, but regardless, the best part is the rapid fortress conquest. Barely 12 days for progress. Yes, peace, because I'm immediately sending spies to prepare further war claims, remember, for entire regions. Sometimes I tend to forget about that. A foothold in Africa was established very quickly. And look at how many new potential countries I'll be bordering now. It's all going to be mine. Although I still don't have a plan for reclaiming that province from France. Click, 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 boom, click. These conquests are definitely progressing too quickly. I've also initiated another war with Castile over Brazil. It accidentally dragged me into conflict with the Austrian Emperor. Oops, this war isn't exactly my devilish plan to regain those two provinces. Meanwhile, I've started adding provinces to trade companies. Now, if you're having trouble with governing, and as you can see, mine has significantly decreased, I recommend adding only provinces with trade bonuses to trade companies. Literally, just a few provinces, because all other provinces, regardless of whether they're territories or states, will receive a production bonus. The bonus increases based on the trade power of our trade company in the region. For every province added to a trade company, we definitely need marketplaces. And for company developments, of course, broker exchange and company depot. The rest are rather useless. Lastly, I'll be building the development that increases... No, not that, not that, not that. This one increases trade steady. Hmm, conquering these two provinces won't end too badly for us, to be honest. Oh. I also managed to implement global volunteer work for free. Let's think. Well, what can I say? They're coming for work. And the last two provinces are finally coming to me. Don't look at me like that. It's what the missions required. And a beautiful colony in Brazil. It'll be established shortly. But I haven't conquered everything. Let Spain continue colonizing here. Because they're much faster at it than me. Unfortunately, after losing those two provinces, Austria has positioned me as a rival on the international stage. I'm quite troubled by this. Hence, I'm moving my troops to the new world. I dislike plotting these routes as it all needs to be done through South America, you lose the least manpower that way by sailing precisely like this. Ooh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, I had colonies here. <laughs> everything to complicate my gameplay, the tulip mania. The tulip was introduced in Europe in the 1550s from the Ottoman Empire. They quickly became popular among the rich merchants in the Netherlands as a luxury item. The market grew and in 1634, when demand increased in France, speculators entered the market. In 1636, a futures market was created and during the Ottoman winter, the prices skyrocketed until the prices collapsed in February 1637. The result was the bankruptcy of man and economic disaster. How to deal with it? Honestly, I'll handle in 
inflation faster. And when did I get kicked out of the empire? In the League War, historically, I sided with the Protestants. And frankly, Brandenburg, without much thought, declared a religious war. They were probably waiting for the Ottoman Empire to join. Too bad France isn't in this war. I think it's definitely time for war. It's best to start religious wars by attacking smaller states because they'll capitulate the fastest. So for now, I'm ignoring countries like England or Castile. I must admit, it's quite nice to see such events when I want to show you something. As usual, the Ottoman Empire's army is quelling my rebels. I'm handing over all the captured provinces to Brandenburg as they're leading in this war. And I'm counting on them to do something sensible, like perhaps changing the country's faith or something. Just hope they don't hand over any provinces to me, because I don't want anything here. True intentions. While the League War was started for religious reasons, the religious allegiance of the Holy Roman Empire is not the only concern of the members. Some see the war as a chance to claim land from some of those on the opposing side, considering the religious goals of the leaders to be secondary, if not a pretessence entirely. And so, faith or land, faith or land. I know I don't want to conquer anything, so let's lean towards faith, especially since I need to reclaim my fortresses as they surprisingly quickly fall to the Spanish. But let's be honest, I don't want to bleed too much in this war, so until I have to, I won't attack. We supposedly have the upper hand. Although maybe let's get Spain out of this war? I could swear I had another colony here. <laughs> The worst part now is clicking through each province. No, you don't have to do that. Remember, you can currently select multiple provinces using the shift key. It's a button on the keyboard and move them all at once with one button. The war is going quite well, although I really admire Munster's resilience, not surrendering just yet, or that of Spain. Somehow the Commonwealth has joined this war. I don't know how that happened, but suddenly they're here. LOL, Castile lost Leon and the war itself ended. I'm not sure how, but there were definitely heavy losses, including mine. It's just been 20 wasted years of war, and it ended in a white piece. Literally anyone can now be emperor. I mean, even we can try to be emperor, because now everyone can choose their own faith and follow it. None of anyone's business. I have plunged into another major conflict with Spain, Portugal, and England, but I simply see an opportunity to conquer Mexico. The British never seem to learn that I currently dominate the seas. I can't believe it, but I need five provinces with an eight tax base, and I burned everything down. I may have gone a bit overboard with conquests, which triggered some serious rebellions in the capital. To stabilize the situation, I released Songhai as my vassal, but in 10 years I'll integrate them anyway. I'm puzzled as to how Jen suddenly became my vassal. I didn't vassalize them. Most of the West African coast is already under our control. We've even ventured into Congo. You might think it's time for the eastern coast. Think again. I believe it's time to deal with the Union over England. Unfortunately, my fleet is in Africa. I need to hurry because I foresee my alliance with France ending soon. Nevertheless, without England, we're already the largest empire in the world. In Europe, I'm primarily focusing on provinces I had initially. It's pretty green here, isn't it? See, I've developed infrastructure everywhere to at least the second level minimum. This allows me to have manufactories for both production and manpower simultaneously. How does Aragon have such an army? They had like one, two, three, all right, maybe a bit more than that, but still, they have too much. Is the personal union between the Netherlands and England, which we have from BC, historically justified in any way? The English have already lost London and they stand no chance against us in battles. And now global trade has emerged in my territory. Not surprising, given that I control the wealthiest trade area and after the British army. The war was bloody, but we managed to seize the Union. However, maintaining it will be challenging. So one might say that a revolution has occurred in our country and I've achieved something, whatever that may signify. You know what's funny? France shares the same dynasty as me, but it would be too much to annex France through the Union. So I'll now try to take the rest of Portugal's colonies in Mexico. I'll also simultaneously attack Mutapa in Africa. But I didn't expect Ethiopia to join this war. I've lost count of how many times I've simply occupied and razed all of Castile. This doesn't necessarily bode well for the pace of their colony formation, considering they pay me the maximum tribute every five years. The African region looks nice. Why don't I see any claims to take Portuguese colonies? Interesting, so the entire Dutch North Africa is filled with manufactories. Africa as a whole is becoming very orange and that's how it should be. South America is looking better, as is North America. Sorry, Florida went to France. Americans, forgive me for that. I've also crossed the 1,000 gold total income mark. I'm making nearly 800 pure profit. This allows me to apply
apply for economic hegemony. Why not indeed? Other countries don't stand a chance against me anymore. The best part is, I haven't even tapped into the richest regions of this world yet. India, Indonesia or Shun. Actually, only the Ottoman armies are larger than mine. And I haven't conquered anything more in Europe. See, that's all I've got. And in this episode, you can see another unusual game. As Japan seeks to establish a Japanese Pacific Empire, yes, I will conquer America too, 